Hello everybody, Jason here from Jason Inspired. Alright, I just want to welcome you guys back to my channel. And um, today we'll be discussing something very important. But before I get on, I just want to say I've missed you guys. Okay, so it's been a while I uploaded anything right here on my channel. And um, I've really missed you guys. Anyways, I've been so occupied in this program at ALX. And I believe you guys, if you're an aspiring software engineer, something I believe you should check, you should check out because... They have lots and lots of content that will help simplify your path to becoming a full-fledged software engineer. All right. So, in fact, that's basically what has inspired my video today. So, today we'll be talking about how to write our own shell program. Isn't that amazing? We're going to be discussing about how to write a simple shell program. All right. Okay. So, right now, you can see um, this black interface i have right here with a bunch of you know my cursor blinking i have this whole colored green text and this blue text right here this whole interface you're seeing right here is called the terminal and in this terminal there are a bunch of things happening right here but what i want you guys to pay attention to is that there's something called a shell within this terminal that helps us interact directly with our operating system so right now i'm actually using i'm actually using a linux operating system all right so this is obtainable within linux distributions but basically what this shell does inside your terminal is that it helps you it provides you with a way of interacting directly with your operating system and if you're a software engineer an aspiring software engineer like i am um, this is something that is unavoidable it's something that is inevitable you have to learn it all right so today i'm just going to be discussing concepts just some basic concepts you need to know in order for you to build your own shell literally all right so without further ado let's just get started all right so speaking of concepts i'm going to be showing you seven basic concepts to build your own shell and um, i just have to point out that these are not my concepts these are not things i made up these are things i read and these are things that are true okay so these are like standards all right so the second thing i want you guys to know is that um these things you're seeing right here are not exhaustive okay so you will definitely need more knowledge in order to get this done you know but these ones i believe are things you can't avoid that's why i'm emphasizing them so the first on my list is the process identifier which you can see right here so the process identifier and um with the acronym of pid then the parent process identifier with the acronym of ppid just like that the second on my list is the command line arguments, the RC and the RV. So um, a lot of us must have learned about this prior to this time. But right now, we're going to be looking at them in the light of building a shell. The third on my list is the executing a program with a very fancy system called, called execv. So we're going to be learning about this. Then the fourth on my list is creating processes with the fork system called FYROK, the fork system call. The fifth on my list is suspending a process or sustain suspending processes so the processes that we create with this system call we also have the freedom to suspend it at will with this um with system call just like that the sixth right here is the file information with the stats system call st8 start system call and then finally we're going to be learning about environment all right so if this sounds a little bit challenging for you there's no issue don't worry we're going to walk through um these concepts in the course of these videos which i'll be uploading so let's just go right here to the first of them process identifier all right then so the big question is what then is a process um a process in its most basic form is just a program in execution so anytime you execute a program what you what you're literally doing is that you're creating a process under the hood all right so when that program is done executing and you you actually return from your main function you terminate that process okay so the process is actually a program in execution but to be much more elaborate you, you can say a, a process is an instance of an executing program which is basically what i just said but the extra information is that it has a unique id okay so it's like you give birth to a child, you want to give your child a name so that it can be able to identify your child and keep track of your child. Okay, so that's what your operating system basically does when you execute a program. It literally begins that process and it assigns a unique ID as long as that process is running. 
so i hope that makes sense so um let me just show you right now something in my terminal the practical to illustrate what i just said okay so right now in my um my present working directory if i do an ls you realize that i have two files in here add.c and subtract.c so what i want to do is that i'm just going to open up my add.c file just to show you what i have right here so i just have a simple file that just adds two numbers and then prints out their sum on the terminal okay so i'm going to close this right now and i'm going to compile this file add.c with gcc add so right now my executable will be this file right here which says add I'm going to hit enter and i'm going to do ls one more time so you realize that i have this add executable right here in my in my directory so right now i can afford to execute this file so if i execute it you realize i have printed to my terminal sum is it if i execute it again it's going to print out the same thing and i'm sure you guys get the gist now basically what's happening is that in between here where i execute the file and where the file is actually terminated where the executable is terminated is what we call a process now anytime i execute this file i am creating an instance of this executable add so the original file is this one which i i created right here add every time i execute it like this I'm actually creating an instance so currently i have three instances so this is the first instance right here this is the second instance and this is the third instance of this file right here add executable now if you go back to our definition we say that um a process is an instance all right of an executing program that has a unique ID. so right now we've been able to see that we can actually create different instances of our executable but how about this guy right here that says a unique id because if this is actually true it means that anytime we run this or we execute this this file this executable we should be having in our case three different um process identifiers to actually identify these three processes all right so let's just prove that right now so i'm going to show you how to do that with a simple function so right now i want to show you guys this function and um, the name of the function is get pid just like that right here get pid and um, this function doesn't accept any parameters so in order to use this function you need to include this header file right here so this unistd.h so that's it right here so don't miss it so make sure because um this function is actually defined in this header file so you just you have to include it to make it work so if that's done then let's write some code now um even before we write the function getting the process id there's a special data type that is associated with it and the data type is actually pid underscore t all right so this data type don't get don't get weary about it it's just a signed integer type that's capable of representing a process id so we should we should be expecting a process id to be a signed integer just an integer all right so the next thing i'm going to write the name of the variable and i could call it whatsoever i like i could call it rice beans anything i like but just to be much more descriptive i'm going to call it pid okay so pid just means process id all right the next thing i'm going to do is that i'm going to put the function right now and this function actually returns the process id so this get pid it returns it returns the process id that's what it does so that's what get pid means get process id okay so it just returns the process id and i'm going to store the, re the return value inside this variable ppid just like that so I'm going to write get PID. And like I said, don't add any parameters because it's void by definition. The next thing I'm going to do is the I'll just print out the process ID. I'm going to do a print F um, PID is percent U this time around. That's what I'm going to use. And I'm going to write right here P id okay so this should have been pid rather than ppid pid 
All right, so I think that looks good for now. So let me save this. Just clear my terminal. And I'm going to recompile my add.c. Oh, add. All right, fine. And the implication is that anytime I execute this add executable right now, I should have three different process IDs to prove that they are actually unique. So let's run this. Process ID is 749. Did you see that? Let's do it again. Process ID is 750. So let me do it one more time. So process ID is 751. So you realize that every time I execute or I create an instance of this program, this add program, which you're seeing right here, it's a program to just add two numbers. Anytime I do this, what's actually happening is that the, the operating system, the kernel is assigning a unique process ID each time. I execute it so basically that's what's happening under the hood um i was going to talk about process parent process identifier in this in this video but it's already taking too long so i'm just going to stop right here so i hope you enjoyed it and if you did please go ahead and share the video um go ahead and like it you know drop a comment probably if you had something that was a little bit contentious i'll also love to learn from you all right so if um i think that's all for now from me so i'll see you in the next one